what's up, boys and girls? You're checking out a special edition of the RCWR show. I don't know what we're calling this. It's a working title. Maybe those of you that's watching this, you can post a comment down below. Let me know what you think we should call this. So far, only thing that comes into mind is FaceTime with Lee Sanders. I think that's kind of corny. I'm sure you guys could probably come up with something better than that. But I'm with a cool special guest. It's the famous Justin Reno. And he's going to tell you he doesn't go by that name anymore. We'll let him tell you what he is now. But I know him as Justin Reno. And uh, Justin, he's been an awesome guest. He's come by from time to time. He was actually our very first guest when we began this two years ago. And this is very different because this isn't your traditional interview where you guys maybe call in, you listen, or you're checking it out on the downloads for your portable device. This is entirely different because this is the first time that we're actually doing a one-on-one -on -one face type of interview so i don't know what we're gonna call this justin we'll let the guys figure it out leave it but to the people. yeah leave it to the people how you been man i haven't heard from you a good while everything been going good how was your holiday and how's the new year going uh everything's been going good in the new year i'm just kind of uh getting over an injury from late last year i got injured in september and uh basically what happened is i jumped out of the ring and uh you know over the top rope which to put in perspective, is about you know somewhere between an eight to ten foot fall, and I just smacked the wood floor. All of my weight went down on my shoulder, and uh, yeah, that messed me up for quite a bit. Now I'm back, you know, doing therapy and getting it strong again, and you know everything's you know going back good in, in the good you know right direction. Everything, so I'm feeling good. That's good. You know, you said this was a shoulder injury you sustained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I don't really know what happened because I went to a doctor and I got an x-ray and they said nothing was broken. So, you know, I went back and he told me I should get an MRI. I said, I'm just going to see how this starts to feel and, uh, you know, not spring for that MRI. I don't even know how much that costs, but I know those things are expensive. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. Now, are you doing this through Obamacare? No, I'm not. Ooh. Did you get registered? No, I didn't. I didn't even really look into it. I got shitty insurance. But uh, I'm hearing now, and I could be wrong about this, but I'm hearing now, like for all wrestlers, this Obamacare thing is a good thing because you pay your premium, whatever you can afford, and then you will have the right to go into whatever hospital, see whatever doctor, and you can get the whole nine yard treatment, man. Yeah, you know that makes sense because when you're a wrestler and you have insurance, if you if you tell them you're a wrestler, they're they're not going to give you insurance. That's the thing. You you, you can't tell them you're a wrestler. Mm -hmm. So, then when you get injured, you got to say, "Oh, I I, you know, fell on the stairs or something." You know, so it's it's like a it's just a hassle to go there, you know, for a wrestling injury and you just you just got to So that I don't know. That makes sense, you know. Yeah. You know, care thing, so it's like it's like you're paying. You could you know you could do whatever. It's your money. You know, I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. It seems like every time we get ready to hook up and do some type of an interview, something crazy is going on in the wrestling world. And I was looking very forward to kicking back talking with you here tonight. I definitely want to get your thoughts on what's probably going on on a lot of shows, a lot of people's minds. This whole craziness that's going on with CM Punk as supposedly, and I want to stress that strongly supposedly he quit the world wrestling entertainment frustrations out of what's going on with creative in particular triple h and so many different stories that's going on i don't want to bore our audience to death because we actually talked about it at great length for like 30 minutes on our youtube channel so for those of you that didn't check it out you can view it there maybe we'll give you guys a link down below or something but uh justin you know hearing all this news i just got to ask you as a wrestler you know, how does it make you feel when you, you hear all this going on? Do you think it's legit or maybe it's a storyline? With CM Punk? Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know if it's a storyline. I feel like it's kind of a work that he might still be with the company, but that he's, like, taking time off or something, but that the company's just, like, working it up because people are getting so worked up about it, you know, so they're, you know – that's free publicity for them on all the dirt sheets and everything. I'm sure people are logging on to WWE.com and 
the WWE Network's coming out. You know, they they love all this talk going on right now. So, you know, who knows if it's legit or not, but uh, it's certainly interesting. Have you ever been in that position before as a wrestler where you're doing everything that a promoter or a booker wants you to do and it kind of seems like you're not really getting your fair share in moving up the roster or you're just not getting your your fair share as far as getting getting what you feel is your due all the time i think that's part of the game you know i i don't know i think for me because i'm still i'm still always the youngest guy in the locker room like i'm still the kid so people are always still looking at me that way and i don't know if it's gonna you know take just a couple you know years for me to age you know to get you know some respect from some people you know but you know not everyone's like that but i've gotten that you know in some places as a wrestler that mainly performs in the independent circuits do you take this and just hypothetically speaking let's say it's legit what he did with this walkout do you take this as a slap in the face as an independent wrestler? Because after all, CM Punk, you go back to his history. He started off in the Indies. That's where he really made his name. That's what led him to the WWE. Do you kind of take it personal? Because he could be sabotaging the door for guys like you and others that want to have that break in the WWE. I don't think it's. I don't think it's hurtful like that. To me, I look at it like a spot just opened up. You know, they just, they have a lot of, you know, money that they were spending every year on him that's freed up now for other guys. So I think that's kind of how a wrestler would look at it is just, you know, every special wrestler wants the spot, you know. So someone else is going to get his spot and then someone else is going to get their spot. And, you know, that just kind of bumps everybody up. Mm. That's just, that's his loss. You know? Right. Right, and this is a story that's going to have to be continued, folks, and we're definitely going to continue to stay on top of that for you all. Justin, I'm curious, did you get the opportunity to check out the Royal Rumble pay-per-view? Yes, I did. Oh, my gosh. What was your thoughts, man? Uh, I thought first match was good. <laughs> that's about it. I like that the Daniel Bryan uh, Bray Wyatt match was awesome. Yeah, like the, the entire match was awesome. It was innovative. It, there was different shit. And then, um, oh, Brock Lesnar Big Show was it was good for what it was. The only thing I didn't like about it was that the beating with the chair before the match happened in the ring. And to me, if both guys are in the ring, why didn't the referee ring the bell? And even if the referee didn't ring the bell. If I was, you know, it, you know, if this was a shoot and I was the ref, I would disqualify Brock Lesnar even though the match hadn't started yet. You know, he should have lost by that. So I just thought the whole beating should have gone down outside of the ring. Then he could have thrown him in the ring, ring the bell, and then do whatever they do. But, uh, yeah, but it was good for what it was. Felt bad for Big Show. He probably feels like shit. He probably does, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what else? John Cena, Orton, we've seen that. A thousand times. Yeah. So who cares? And the Rumble match was good, but it was the ending of it was just, it was anticlimactic. It was, but the final four, it was like, okay. You know, everyone just wanted to see Brian, you know. You feel you feel bad for Rey Mysterio because it could have been anybody coming out number 30. They were going to boo him. You know, I, they just wanted to see Daniel Bryan, and it's kind of a shame that he wasn't in that match. I, you know, when I watched it the first time live, because I actually ended up watching it twice. I watched it through the initial sitting, and then I did the post-show. And then after the post-show was over, I did the post-production work. I came back. I watched it again. And both times, my interpretation of the pay-per-view, it was totally different. So, like, the first time I'm watching it, I'm laughing. I'm looking at all the craziness that's going on from the fans, them chanting, we want refund, we want divas. This is awful. I mean, they were just like, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. And seeing Rey Mysterio get booed, I'm like, oh, my God. You know, I'm thinking this is all funny. But then when I watched it the second time, it's like, man, Rey Mysterio, what the fuck has he ever done to get such a reaction? Because They forgot about him. Yeah. About him. I was watching with a bunch of buddies, and, we, you know, we, you know, when it got down to, you know, 20 – three or something we were like okay this person this person this person still got to come out and 
you know, there were like still a couple mystery guys that were still going to come out. And then number 30, you know, we didn't know who it was. We forgot about Rey Mysterio. So I'm sure they did too. Nothing against Rey Mysterio, but he's been gone for so long. Yeah. And Just then not forgotten. Right, and then the same thing with Sheamus. He also kind of got a a little bit of a crappy reaction and this is a guy that we hadn't seen in 7 months, had somewhat of a same similar injury that you had and he didn't even get really a reaction like that. And why the hell Kevin Nash was in there? That makes well, I know why, but I, I just I just thought that was a waste of space. Quite yeah, he honestly. Didn't, he didn't look great in there. No, no, he didn't. He did. <laughs> and and JBL taking up a spot. I mean, that was just really yeah, you know, it's just a very weird pay-per-view to watch. I mean, it was I liked I liked the bull though. Oh yeah, the bull had a good spot. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> the bull had a good spot. Kofi had a good spot too. Yeah, it was. I bet you uh come next year, at uh, next year's Royal Rumble, I think what they're probably going to end up doing, they're going to do the same thing with Kofi, but the next go around, he's going to uh, be on that little guard wall barrier. He's going to stand on top of it, and he's going to just run all the way across till he gets to the steel steps, jump on the steel steps, gets in the ring that way. I'm telling you, I know it's going to happen. Or he's just going to do a backflip from it <laughs> and land inside of the ring. He'll go over the top rope, do a backflip, land in the ring. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I want to get your take on something as a, as a person that watches the WWE product. And you're also a wrestler at the same time, so you got that really great insight. What do you say to the folks that are looking at the WWE product right now and they feel that Triple H is just being one of those type of guys that's just trying to look out for all his friends, his family? I think the Royal Rumble is a good example. New Age Outlaws, Tag Team Champions, Kevin Nash made that pop up. His boy Dave Batista wins the Royal Rumble. What do you make of that? I said it on the post show, and some folks thought that I was being a little bit too, too. Uh, what's the right word? I was being a little bit too critical of the comparison. But I say, you know, Triple H reminds me of the corrupt Detroit mayor Kwame Kilpatrick, because once he's in power, he's giving his high school buddies and people he knew from way back jobs that don't even deserve it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of by design, though, because that's that's kind of the story that they're trying to tell. So that's, you know, what they're putting on TV, and that's, I don't know, that's why the whole CM Punk thing kind of seems like, it, you know, maybe could be a work to me. I just, I don't know, it just, it, it, there's too much going on where it just seems like Triple H is being too much like his character on TV, you know, and he can't be that, that much like his character on TV. He, he can't be. No. So, you know, something, something, there's too much going on that, you know, looks like it's a shoot right now. But it, it, I think it's, you know, kind of by design just to, you know, get people invested in that story and to, to hate Triple H even more. Because whoever he's wrestling, and if, if CM Punk's not wrestling him at WrestleMania, that like the sheets are saying that he was, and it's going to be Daniel Bryan is the rumor that I read. You know, how much heat does Triple H have right now? How over is Daniel Bryan right now? The people are going to be so hot for that match. It's going to be ridiculous. There's going to be noise, you know? It, it's so interesting because I've been paying attention to one of the latest videos we put out talking about CM Punk making his exit, and so many people are passionate about Daniel Bryan. They want to see him become WWE champion. They want to see him get nothing but everything that they feel he deserves, right? But I'm very quick to point out to them, so wait a minute. It's good that you appreciate Daniel Bryan, but guys, where were you summer of last year when Daniel Bryan headlined not one, not two, but three pay-per-view events for the WWE title, and those pay-per-view buy rates were very crappy. You guys didn't represent you know, it's like, so, of course, WWE, they're going to probably tease you for as long as possible in making Daniel Bryan champion because they want the payoff at the very end to be really, really sweet. And they want to be able to just ride the freaking rocket that is Daniel Bryan to the heights that they feel that it can go. Yeah, I think they might be riding it a little too long, though, because I, I feel like what everyone wanted to see and what was kind of the best story is if Daniel Bryan won the Rumble and 
won the belt at Mania. You know, how does it get much better than that? And that's that's not what they've done, and that's kind of why everyone's pissed off right now. Yeah. What's your thoughts about Batista coming back? Uh, I like Batista, but he didn't look that great in the Rumble. Like, he had some rust on him. It was pretty clear. And, you know, now he's going to main event WrestleMania, so, you know, how is that match going to be? I don't know. I, I don't mind him being back, but I think maybe it, it should have been longer before he was in the world title picture. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. At least with The Rock, it was different because in some shape or form, he's always training. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I remember reading somewhere as he was getting ready to come back to the WWE when he was doing his movies, he had a ring built for him while he was on the road, I think. And he, he was, you know, he was doing his stuff that way. Let's talk about the independent circuit for a little bit. Uh, I see AJ Styles. This guy's just been popping up just about everywhere. Have you been able to, uh, you and your friends that's in the wrestling business, have y'all been able to benefit from it? Um, I have not really seen it yet, but this Saturday he's going to be somewhere kind of close by. And uh, I was thinking of going just to check it out because AJ Styles is there and, you know, some of my buddies are wrestling on the show. So, I mean, it, it's cool, you know. He's going to get me to go to a show to a company that I've never been to. So, so right there, you know, he's bringing eyes to that company. So everywhere he goes, I'm sure, you know, people are doing the same thing. They're going to go there because AJ Styles is there. So that's really good. Yeah, it is. It is. It's really helping out the independent circuit uh, big time from what I'm seeing here. I mean, he's just popping up. It seems like every time you turn around, new dates are being added. He's going to new promotions. It's definitely helping out overall. Uh, let me get your thoughts on um, the recent passing of uh, May Young. I mean, you know, it's sad, but she's so old. You know, I think they said she was the oldest living professional wrestler. I don't know if that's true, but that I read that somewhere. Mm. And, you know, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I uh, had recently checked out a DVD is and and it's kind of weird because it's the only DVD that she and Fabulous Moolah did. I'm thinking maybe they did something with WWE. They never did anything for the WWE. They did something with I think RFD Video or something like that. And uh, yeah, it was it was a really good interview, man. I was like, wow, you know, this is good stuff. Hey, at least she got into the Hall of Fame right before, you know. Yeah. You know. I, I I seen a documentary on Netflix called Lipstick and Dynamite. It's mm -hmm. about uh, female professional wrestling. I haven't checked it out yet, but I know she's in that. And I've been meaning to check that out. And that's Lipstick and Dynamite? Yeah. Oh, I had to check that out, too. That's what's up. Uh, so tell the folks, you know, what do you think about what's currently going on with the TNA product, man? Because this was a promotion that you, at one point, you were very interested in, uh, in hooking up with. And I know you had did the TNA Gut Check Online tournament. I mean, you look at everything that's been going on there. They lost AJ Styles. They lost Jeff Jarrett. And the way things are looking right now, it seems that they've lost the icon Sting. And you talk about the way to have Sting go off of Impact Television. That is being deemed from a lot of fans as one of the worst ways to have Sting take his final bow in a promotion. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, TNA is, it's, it's kind of hard to watch these days. You know, I don't I don't watch every week. I watch it from time to time. You know, they've, you know, frustrated me, obviously, with the, the gut check thing. And, you know, the guy who won that thing, you know, whatever happened to him, he was never even on the show. So, I mean, that's that's really unprofessional. And they're, they're really unprofessional in a lot of ways. And uh, I don't know. I They're hard to watch. It's It's not good TV. I kind of hope the Jeff Jarrett, Toby Keith kind of rumors are true and, you know, maybe open up something else, you know, separate and, you know, open up more jobs for wrestlers. The more companies there are, the better. So, you know, I don't want to see TNA go out of business. I don't think anyone in the wrestling business wants to see TNA go out of business. We want to see them, you know, get better. But they never do. And it's frustrating. It's, 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 it's so frustrating. I used to watch, I used to, when I was a mark, you know, before I was in the business, there was a period where I was so frustrated with WWE and John Cena and, the, you know, everything that they were doing that I, 
I boycotted watching WWE, and I only watched TNA because it was so different, and everyone was young and hungry, and they had the six-sided ring. It was different. And just every year, you know, they digress. It just, you know, gets less original. It's almost like it's a bad copy of WWE. Everything they're doing, they got the Gail Kim and and uh, her girl is like, you know, AJ and Tamina. Yeah. They're doing Dixie Carter's now doing like, she, she almost even says best for business. You know, she like almost has to hold back saying that catchphrase because she's being just like them, you know. It, it's just a, like a bad copy. Yeah, I agree with you. There seems to be a lot of cases where they are kind of ripping one from the WWE playbook rather than just try to get their own identity, do like they did really before. I, you know, I don't even want to put all the blame on Hogan and Bischoff, but it just kind of seems like they had their own identity. I mean, look, they're gone now, and look at look at how Magnus is booked. Like, they they even built him up, you know, over the years to look like a strong competitor. And now that he's a champion, he can't do anything by himself. It has to be 15 guys got to run in. You know, he's not a strong champion. He's a, He looks like a weak champion. And it makes the whole company look weak. And it makes you wonder who is going to be the one to take the title off of him after putting all this investment into him. Because you look at a guy like uh, Gunner. Gunner looks good. He looks good. Don't get me wrong, oh, but I don't quite think he's ready just yet. You know, he's almost there, but I don't think he's quite ready. What's your thoughts about Sting? You know, because the way it's looking right now, all signs are indicating this guy has signed some type of a deal with WWE. I'd like to see that because, and nothing against Sting. I like Sting a lot, but it's the way TNA books Sting that I don't like. You know, like. Uh, uh, like Shawn Michaels, the way he was booked in WWE after he returned, he won the belt once, and then he was like a main event guy. He'd wrestle like you know great matches, but he didn't need the belt. Mm -mm. You know, staying every single year at Bound for Glory, they give him the belt, or you know, it's it's too much. It's it's it can't be the Sting show because he's past his prime, so it has to be somebody else's show. So he's a great addition to the show, but TNA you know makes it all about Sting and. You know, that's not Sting's fault. You know, he's going to do it because it makes him look big and, you know, good, makes his legacy or whatever. But uh, I don't know. It's it's the way TNA books it that I don't like. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I just really wish they would have given this guy a proper send-off, somewhat similar to giving the proper send-off to AJ. You didn't have to have it air on TV either. You could have just... Let it be an exclusive for the fans, right? Did he have a send-off, or did he just lose no. in that last match to Magnus? He just lost to Magnus, and that was it. Matter of fact, both of those guys, both lost to Magnus, and that was it. No no addressing the crowd, no emotional moment by the roster coming now, nothing. Just take care, you know? It, cool. It, it comes off unprofessional and to kind of back up on what you said earlier. Yeah. Whatever happened to the guy that won the TNA gut check, uh, was at the online tournament. You know, it's like you look at a guy like Jay Bradley. I've been checking out. He's OV gone now. Yeah. He's gone now. I've been checking out his work in OVW. He's uh, getting ready to return to the uh, extreme rising promotion. I'm like, my God, this guy, he's got charisma. You know, he just needs the right amount of time, camera time. And he can go with, I don't know if you've been checking out OVW, but he's been doing like this weird, crazy MMA fighter type of gimmick. And like after he beats up his opponents post-match, he actually has a press conference and uh, he's he's got a t-shirt and a hat on and he's going, I just want to, I just want to thank my trainer and uh, I want to thank this person. I mean, it, it's totally funny. It's, it's ridiculously funny. But you look at a guy like Jay Bradley, young, and you're like, okay. This guy won TNA Gut Check, the TV version, mm -hmm. yet they didn't know what to do with him. And now you see guys like Davey Richards, Eddie Edwards, the American Wolves <laughs> coming in there. You're hoping good things happen. They're a tag team, so I think they'll, you know, do well as a tag team. And TNA always, they get hot and cold with it, but they always have, like, a really strong tag team division, and then it turns to crap, and then it gets really strong. But I think because they signed the two of them, I think for that reason, I don't. I don't how is the tag scene right now? Who are the champs? The Bromans. Bromans. The Bromans are actually—they're not bad. Yeah. 
But uh, who are they? Who are they wrestling? Who are they feuding with? They just started feuding with Eric Young and Joseph Park like last week or the week before. So that's their top opponents. Yeah, and before that, they were sitting at home. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. That they have another <laughs> tag team then. Yeah, yeah, and the knockouts division. Uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but they just received a big one up as uh, they got a hold of Shine Wrestling Santana Garrett. So she's now signed with the with the promotion. She's a phenomenal athlete, but I don't know oh. if she's a phenomenal athlete, but I don't know if she's going to be utilized right. You know? Yeah, who knows? I don't know her, so Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy, man. So when are you going to be getting in back uh when are you going to be getting back into the ring, throwing it down, man? I'm actually not going to be wrestling again for right, you know, as of now cuz you know, things pop up. But my next thing on my calendar is not till February 22nd, the next Blitz show in Joliet. So you will be wrestling at that event? Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing. It's a weird thing. I like Fans always show up and they like know what the card is and everything. I never know what the card is. No one ever tells me. So I always show up. I'm like, okay, who am I wrestling? Like I never know until I get there. Wow, that is crazy, man! <laughs> you, you don't even you don't even try to look at the card like the day that you're traveling to the event. You just you just find out when you get there. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a big deal. I'll fight whoever you know. Long long as you get in the ring and you're doing your thing, it, nothing else matters. Yeah, it's more it's it's better when you when you could just uh, go out there and feel it out, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, at least for me it is. You know, some guys like to go in there and they're like, let's do this, 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 and this. I'd rather just go in there and, you know, let's work. Let's, you know, I'm a heel, you're a face or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's go in there and have a match. That's right. how I like to wrestle. There ain't nothing wrong with that, man. So you got the that date coming up. That's the only date right now? Uh, not here. I only got Blitz calendar, or only Blitz dates on my calendar here, but... I got it for the whole year. The 22nd, March 22nd, April 26th, May 24th, so. Okay. So you got something going on on basically the week of the 20th every month. Yeah, last Saturday. Last, oh, month. all Saturdays. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let the good folks know how they can keep tabs on you and uh, stay connected. I know you got the Twitter. You got the YouTube. I got I mean, a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. It's all at uh, like Facebook.com slash Jester Yorick, which is Y O R I C K. Or, you know, I also got JesterYork.com or JudasYork.com. It all goes to the same place. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing on Twitter, you know, slash Jester Yorick. So it's all pretty universal and simple, but you can just go to the website, you know, it's all there. Hey, you got to tell the folks that might have not checked out the last interview. You got to hip them to how you came up with the Justin, uh, with the Justin York character, because I think that is a very unique character you got going on right there. It, it's you know, as a someone who wanted to get into the business, you know, forever. Like ever since I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be a wrestler. So you always kind of start to think of who you want to be like, or you know, what kind of character you want to be. I always kind of gravitated toward like the Undertaker and like mankind and you know those kind of characters so i wanted to be something like dark and creepy like so i wanted to be i wanted to be a clown but i didn't want to be like a regular clown because that's been done before so i just i wanted to be a jester so and it's you know it's just it's really cool visually i get, i wear the chic boots you know with the curl and the toe and, you know, everything I wear is just really unique, different. I wear a mask. I got horns, you know, all on the side, you know. Like most people, I've seen horns, you know, go up, but my horns go down because I'm a jester, and it's like my jester hat. So it's just fun for me to be creative and artistic, and I come out with different skulls, and I always, you know, paint different things, and I do my tape differently. So, um yeah, I, when I got in the business, I was doing the Justin Reno thing because that's what was presented to me. And then, you know, it had to take me a few years to, like, pitch my ideas and, you know, let them have me wrestle the way that I want to wrestle and be who I want to be. I want to create myself. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be, you know, what you tell me to be. I want to create myself. So I have had the opportunity to wrestle as uh, in a company they had. I was wrestling as Justin Reno for a year. 
and they had the idea to have these two other guys, Grin and Machine, and they're in a group called the Three Rings, like a Three Ring Circus. So they came up with the idea for the Three Rings to kidnap me and to drug me and, you know, to turn me into to what became Jester Yorick. So that's what happened, and that's how I am here. Awesome, awesome. Let me ask you, how close are you to OVW? Because I was watching the promotion the other week, and they had some angle that was going on, and I just said, man, uh, Jester York would be awesome in OVW. What's that? And I said, uh, I, when I was looking at OVW last week, they had one segment that kind of jumped out at me, and it kind of made me say, you know what, Jester York would be very cool right here. How how are you, how close is uh, OVW to you? I'm not sure where it is. Louisville? Yeah. Kentucky? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm in Chicago. I don't know. I don't know how far that is. Is that even East Coast? It's been a minute since I looked at the map. <laughs> no, it's it's in the Midwest. Midwest? It's in Kentucky. It's like somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle? It's it's south. South, okay. You should holler at them, man. I, I think you'd be a good fit over there. Yeah, I'm definitely this year. Um, in August, it'll be my fifth year in the business, so I definitely want to do something big. I've been thinking about going maybe there or, you know, to Florida. You know, there's so many wrestling opportunities in Florida. It's ridiculous. Or Japan or, you know, I really want to do something by the end of the year. If, you know, for my fifth year, I want to do something big and something different. So we'll see. Maybe I will end up there. Awesome. Awesome. One more time, Justin. Give the folks those good links. Let them know where to check you out. Yep, JesterYork.com. That's where everything is, or you could just, I also like to, you know, update my Facebook more than anything else. So Facebook.com slash Jester York or Twitter.com slash Jester York. My Twitter basically is just everything I post on my Facebook goes to my Twitter. So I don't, I don't really tweet. So you can follow me on Facebook or, you know, if you, if you just do Twitter, follow me there. Awesome. Awesome. Always a pleasure to talk with you, man. Hopefully it doesn't take as long next go round because we definitely would love to have you back and find out what else you've been up to. I want to hear how your return to the ring had went next month. For sure, man. I'll let you know. All right. Awesome. Well, the one and only, uh, what am I going to call you now? It's like, because we got the Justin York. Do I call you Justin Reno or what the heck? What, what are we calling you now, man? <laughs> I'm not wearing a mask, but I'm still Jester York. <laughs> All right. The one and only Jester York. Thank you so much, bro. All right. Have a good one, man. You too.